So even that's like my second career when I retire from teaching, I'd like to go back to industry, I don't ever see myself retiring, because our industry is so exciting, it's changing all the time. Okay, and there's so many wonderful things that are happening um, in Perth County, especially um, Ronald didn't get to mention this, but they're doing some research now into medical tourism, which is another area we're looking into right now too. So moving forward, um, I would like to introduce the panel. What I'm going to do is call them up one by one, and they're going to come up on stage, and I'm going to ask them two questions. Okay. The first person I'd like to call up is JC from the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. The next person I'd like to call up is Justin Sharp from Expedia. The next person is Nasa Webby from Ocean Properties Limited. Uh, Seth Grooms from Carnival Cruise Line. Mike Crasco from Blooming Brands Incorporated. And then I'd like to also call up Chris. Oh, sorry, Chris, I forgot the name of your company. I apologise. You, you can tell everybody which, which brewer you're from. I apologise. Do you want to tell them, Chris? Which... Sure. I'm uh, Chris Johnson from Green Bench Brewing Company here in downtown St. Pete. Apologies, I had a block. I apologise. <laughs> anyway, so. What I thought I can do is the question I'm going to ask is, um, and we'll go, you know, along the line of who wants to answer first. The first question I want to, sh uh, to ask you is, share a personal journey of how you got to where you are right now in your positions. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Um, I was going to college and I just started at a front desk at Holiday Inn back in 83. And I've been with the same company since. Uh, I went for, uh, I had an associate degree in aeronautical engineering. And it's amazing, I just switched to business and I've been in this business since. I haven't left it, I love it. Uh, I've been all around, I travel a lot. I love the company I work for, I'm here. Thank you. Brilliant. Who wants to go next? Seth? Oh, it's all JC, whoever. So I have a similar background to Nazar. I was going to college. I, I'm from New Jersey, moved down to Miami to be a marine biologist. Didn't like that once I started studying it. Switched to psychology. Uh, graduated, didn't know what to do. My friend told me I should come work for Carnival. And it's been nine years. So I had no interest in hospitality and tourism. Didn't know anything about the cruise line. All I knew was my grandmother had a travel agency and we used to go on vacations a lot. <laughs> um, once I stepped onto a cruise ship, that was it. Okay. JC? I, I feel a theme here. Um, <laughs> I was in college and I have a degree in international studies and a master's degree in public administration. And I started my career actually in the public sector, but not the fun part, uh, like Rhonda works in, but the HR part. Um, and I found out quickly that it wasn't the, the industry that I wanted to be in. And so um, I became a consultant, and I had an opportunity to preview a lot of different uh, industries, manufacturing, retail, uh, and hospitality. And so I uh, really was drawn to hospitality, went to work for uh, Darden Restaurants in uh, Orlando at the corporate office. Then I uh, transitioned to uh, Orange Lake Resorts, which is a timeshare uh, organization. And then in 2010, I had an opportunity to go to Las Vegas uh, to work for MGM Resorts International. And I wish you could see my husband's face when I told him I wanted to move our six-year-old and nine-year-old to Las Vegas. Uh, but we did, and uh, I have to say, uh, I've, I've enjoyed hospitality ever since I entered hospitality, but uh, I do have to say that gaming is, I'm hooked. And so today I work for the uh, Seminole Hard Rock in Tampa, uh, and I think it's probably the most fantastic industry there is. Never a dull moment. I guess this would be a good segue then. Um, I have worked in human resources really right out of college. Um, started in non hospitality type industries and companies. Uh, worked in an internship at General Electric, um, then worked for a company called United Technologies, um, including their Pratt Whitney aircraft to, um, jet engine division and um, the automotive division, um, and then started with Anheuser Busch. So I guess that was the first kind of uh, 
uh, entry into hospitality, although I worked at the a manufacturing facility, a brewery, where we made beer. Um, and then through that connection, Anheuser-Busch owned Bush Gardens, so I transferred with that company to Bush Gardens, and all this was in human resources. Uh, but finally, hardcore hospitality, that was uh, a theme park, fun, very fun place to work. Um, and then have most recently transitioned to Bloomin' Brands, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is the parent company of Outback Steakhouse, uh, Bonefish Grill, Carabas, Fleming Steakhouse. Uh, so it's been uh, a long journey through different companies and industries, but have loved uh, the last number of years uh, in the hospitality area. Uh, so, when I was in college, um, I uh, was actually a pre-med major, I wanted to, uh, yeah, I wanted to, to be, um, I want to specialize in pa kidney pancreas transplants, that's what I had my eyes set on for, since I was like 12, and so, uh, so I went to school for that, I was a biochem uh, major, and I finished my pre-reg study for my MCAT, I was like, I don't want to go to med school anymore, and I worked in a hospital for eight years, I, mean, I was working there, first job I ever had was six years old, I was working in the neurointensive care unit in the hospital. And um, then I went back to school, was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be a lit major, I like reading, so I became a lit major, my dad was pissed. And then, um, I, uh, while I was in school, I was like working two jobs, I full time, I was like, I'm kinda bored, so I wanted a hobby. So my dad, when I was like 10, was a home brewer, I was like, ah, I'll make beer. So, uh, bought a home brewer, I wanted to make beer, realized I didn't know anything about beer, started drinking a lot for like a year, uh, did a lot of research, <laughs> learned about all the styles, how you make them, like really thinking about it a lot, and then I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll do this now. So I bought equipment, made a beer, uh, did like a few beginner batches, and then I was like, I want to make like the advanced kind. So I built all this equipment on like a, a February, 70 years ago, and uh, brewed, I wrote a recipe, first beer I ever wrote, brewed, made it, then I entered into competition and won a statewide medal for it. And then I won like a ton of medals for like the next like few years, just like I've like misplaced more medals I think than like, I have in my apartment. It's like it's ridiculous. And so then like six months later, I ended up volunteering at Cigar City Brew. Met Wayne Walt was the brewmaster there. Uh, we just hit it off really well. Talked a lot about like the philosophy of beer and like our passions in it and like what really what we loved about it. Um, and then six, uh, three six months later, he hired me there, so I started working at Cigar City. I worked there for like 10 months or so, and then uh, left because there were two people that had a homebrew shop, actually the same homebrew shop I bought my original kit from, uh, but they wanted to open a small brewery, so they hired me to open the brewery for them. So I did a licensing and permitting for that, built all the equipment, kind of got all set up, uh, ran and operated that brewery for about two years, um, also teaching beginner and advanced brewing classes. Uh, then I realized that I, at the time, while I was doing that, that I wanted to own my own business and wanted to do this for myself. So uh, I wrote a business plan, started getting some investors, had a few failed uh, uh, runs, and then eventually met my two business partners currently, Nathan and Stephen, who were just two dudes trying to open a brewery as well. We kind of got together, hung out for a couple years, joined our business plans, uh, got an SBA loan and a bunch of investors, and we opened Green Bench Brewing Company a little over two years ago. So now that's what I do. In addition to that, just starting last week, um, I'm also one of the, like, faculty members and kind of like board founder, board members and founders of uh, the Brewing Arts Program at USF St. Petersburg that started last week. So I'm also teaching classes at USF in the Brewing, so that's all right. Okay, Justin. I gotta follow that. Wait, man. No, it's fine. So I was, I was born and raised in Michigan, so straight out of college, I got a degree in marketing and I was selling door-to-door -door cell phones. So, worst job, probably one of the worst jobs I've ever had. So then I moved to, my parents had moved to Florida, so I decided, hey, why not? So I moved to Florida, moved to my parents in Fort Lauderdale, and got a job in the airline industry with their friends. So for the first two months, I was taking reservation calls on the phone. So that might have been the worst job I've ever had in my life. It's people yelling at you, screaming at you, their travel's going wrong and everything like that. Whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. So, and just having a feel of 60, 70 phone calls a day was, Crazy. So I moved into uh, the hotel side. So I started working with Expedia about five years ago down there in Fort Lauderdale. I moved up to Tampa about a year and a half ago. So now I manage the accounts, all the hotel accounts for Expedia in Tampa and the Sarasota area. So. Okay. Anything you guys want to, on a closing remark that you can share with students or networking? I, I mean, I always bring it up all the time in the classroom how networking is so important. If you want to mention anything about why LinkedIn is really important for them to be on LinkedIn. Any, anything you want to share with them? I'm closing. Uh, 
I think networking, sorry, if I can go first. Uh, networking is so important. Uh, before I took this position as business development director, I was kind of shy. I like to be in the back end. I like to be behind the phone, answering emails. Uh, I told my boss I love to do presentations. I had never done a presentation before. So when I first had to do it, I was like, what am I going to do? Uh, I stayed up all night practicing, and then now I love to talk in front of people, so I'm sorry. Uh, but it's really important to network, and Tampa Bay is a huge networking community. There's so many different groups, not just LinkedIn, because that's important too, but there's so many physical networking groups. Uh, there's actually something called Young Travel Professionals, which started in New York back in 2010. And I was looking into that because there's nothing like that in Tampa Bay for young travel professionals. Anyone in hospitality and tourism is a travel professional. Uh, whether you're working at a brewery because you're responsible for bringing people in and making sure they're having a great time while they're staying on the beach or wherever they are. But we didn't have that here for young travel professionals like you and me. So we're going to have the Tampa Bay chapter starting very soon. It's so new, it's not even launched, but there's things like that. Uh, working with your CVB, they have networking events all the time as do the Chambers of Commerce um, through all ages and industries. I just think that's really important because you get to meet people all the time. Not only are you able to meet other people, find out what they do? You might want to work for them, work with them, or things like that. So there's, you never know what can come out of networking. Um, I, I personally say that, like, uh, I mean, again, I mean, it's a very personal thing, but essentially all, all, the, all the businesses that this panel represents next to me um, are very much part of the reason why Green Bench is in St. Petersburg. Um, so, I mean, just, like, I think, for example, like, we, we partnered with, with Visit St. Pete Clearwater on several things. Actually, on one of those slides, one of their magazines, there's a picture of our brewery on there. And um, so, as going back to like sort of market research and, and when we were really developing like the concept of the brewery, and even before I made name Stephen, like where I wanted to put the brewery, you know, looking over the same numbers that she kind of ran through, you know, on uh, on her slides with how many people we have here visiting, why they come here. Is very important. So, like for example, when we decide we want to go package with cans one day for these core brands, where do we want them? Like, well, that becomes like what hotels do we want, where do they go, like all that stuff. So, even if necessarily you want to be in the industry, but you want to run do your own thing as well, like where you put it is very important. And like knowing that there are companies like this that uh, bring this many people to an area that all there are tourists. I mean, the fact that every single day at my brewery, at least. I'd say a large percentage of the people that come to my business don't live here, which is fascinating. I mean, like, of, of course we have regulars and a lot of people that do come for the most part are from, are from here, but like every day a large percentage of the people that walk in are people that are coming to the beaches, are coming to come for a cruise, they just got off a cruise, or they're staying, they, they've gone to the Hard Rock because they're in a hotel down the road, wherever it is, you know. So like, um, I think together, that's what's amazing. I think that this, that, you know, there's a reason we open it for you. So I feel like uh, that'd be something else to consider if you were to something yourself. Anybody else? I'll throw in uh, one more plug. Um, something that I, I guess I didn't realize until maybe five years ago, uh, so I'll throw it out there for you guys, is to get involved in a nonprofit. Um, yeah. I'm on the board now of Big Brothers Big Sisters of Tampa Bay. And so it's, you know, it's a good cause. It's something that you could do outside of your core work. Um, and honestly, it's good networking too. So you, you meet a lot of people, you know, pick something you're interested in, but you'll meet people who come from all different backgrounds. Um, and it's just, I found it's just a really good balance to, you know, the working part, the, the work for pay part of my life is to uh, volunteer. So it's, I mean, it just makes you feel better. It's doing good for the community, it's helping. Um, local people. Um, it's just a very positive experience. I'd encourage you to kind of think about what organizations, and there's tons and tons of them here um, in Tampa, St. Pete areas that you can get involved with. Um, and you can do it on a small basis or a very large, I mean, depending on what you want to do. So, yeah, you can do museums as well. I mean, there's so many museums here in Florida, or in St. Pete specifically in, in Clearwater area that, like in Pinellas, that have like so many opportunities. But we, we try to partner as much as we can, which I think is also great too. So if you go to like some event that's going to have several businesses, that's a great place to network as well because you might be just volunteering, but then you just learn. Like you might just learn about an industry that you never even thought was like an opportunity um, just by volunteering at some event that you know businesses are collaborating on uh, around town. So I'd like to add one thing. This is kind of related. Well, 
um, to networking, and it's after you get that first job in the uh, in the industry. What I always like to tell people is, you're interviewing for that next position every single day, and so I think it's important that you make sure that you purposely showcase your skills, and you do that by volunteering to work on special projects. Um, go ask someone if they can be their, your mentor or give you some advice. Get yourself out there, get yourself known. Um, dress and behave the part of the position that you aspire to. And I can tell you that with certainty that a lot of times internal promotion decisions are made before the job's ever even posted. We'll have conversations in the executive staff room about uh, a position and we'll bring up, you know, God, this thing's driving me nuts. We'll bring up, you know, Bob, he's, he's a real hot shot. He worked on this extra special project and he did this and he and he's always got the best attitude. Again, People are interviewing every day for that next position, so keep that in mind because the senior executive staff is looking for that and they're, they're making decisions before they ever post the position. They post it with a candidate identifying and they're moving that person in there, so um, it's kind of a continuation of the networking. Well, we're going to have to close it because um, we're going to have time outside in the outside the auditorium where you can ask questions. But I just want to thank the panel. Thank you so much for giving up your time to come here this evening. It's been very beneficial. And then we also got somebody, two people here. Um, Sunny DiCarlo, who works extremely hard behind the scenes to coordinate these events. She's at the back there. That's Sunny. Jacob Walter, and also um, Paul Sutton, and Raphael is up there, who is doing all the AV. These are all the people behind the scenes that make these events possible, okay? Um, they do a lot of work, um, you know, behind the scenes, get up a lot of their time to, to coordinate these events for you, um, for the program. So it's really important that, you know, when you get a chance, you thank them, okay? Because um, they have to go out of their way to make these things happen. And, you know, to bring these people that have given up their time, these execs, to come here and, you know, give you information, etc., to help you move your career where it needs to be, okay? So I want to thank you for all coming. So we're all going to go out in the foyer outside now, in the foyer, and you'll get to talk to these execs outside and ask some questions. So thank you very much, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thank you.